XDAT, instructions for use. XDAT is a hemostatic device for the control of severe life-threatening bleeding from junctional wounds in the groin or axilla not amenable to tourniquet application in adults and adolescents, and narrow entrance extremity wounds in the arms or legs in adults and adolescents. XDAT is a temporary device for use up to four hours until surgical care is acquired. It should only be used for patients at high risk for immediate life-threatening bleeding from hemodynamically significant advanced trauma life support class 3 or 4 hemorrhagic shock, non-compressible junctional wounds, or narrow entrance extremity wounds, and when definitive care at an emergency care facility cannot be achieved within minutes. XDAT is not indicated for use in the thorax, the pleural cavity, the mediastinum, the abdomen, the retroperitoneal space, the sacral space, tissues above the inguinal ligament, or tissues above the clavicle. XDAT contains rapidly expanding cellular sponges individually marked with an X-shaped radiopaque marker. XDAT works by applying the small sponges into a wound cavity using a lightweight applicator. In the wound, the XDAT sponges expand and create a barrier to blood flow, present a large surface area for clotting, and provide gentle pressure. The XDAT hemostatic devices are available in two sizes, XDAT 12 and XDAT 30 Generation 2. XDAT 12 has a 12 millimeter outer diameter and holds approximately 38 mini sponges. The XDAT 30 Generation 2 has a 30 millimeter outer diameter and holds approximately 108 mini sponges. If the entrance of the wound is too narrow to access with an XDAT 30, then XDAT 12 is the preferred device to achieve hemorrhage control. XDAT applicators are composed of two primary parts, the main body and a plunger. XDAT instructions for use. Prior to using XDAT, fully examine the injured patient and assess for signs of bleeding. Arterial bleeding is caused by the laceration of an artery and is the most difficult type of blood loss to control. Arterial hemorrhage is characterized by spurting blood that is bright red in color. Even a small, deep arterial puncture wound can produce significant blood loss. If the hemorrhage cannot be identified or the anatomical location is not a junctional or extremity wound, XDAT is not the preferred dressing to achieve hemorrhage control and alternative treatments should be used, such as other hemostatic dressings or tourniquets. XDAT has not been tested for use in extremity wounds that are amenable to tourniquet application. XDAT used in conjunction with tourniquet application has not been assessed for use in extremity wounds that are amenable to tourniquet application. Note, the method of application is the same for either XDAT 12 or XDAT 30 Generation 2. Read indications for use and warnings and cautions on front label and back label. Open outer pouch and remove inner package. Open one inner package and remove applicator and plunger. Insert applicator into wound track as close to bleeding source as possible. Insert plunger into applicator and push plunger firmly to deploy sponges into wound. Material should flow freely into the wound. Deploy XDAT within 30 seconds of insertion into wound. Do not attempt to forcefully eject the material from the applicator. If resistance is met, pull back slightly on the applicator body to create additional packing space, then continue to depress handle. Use additional applicators as necessary to completely pack the wound with sponges. Injuries with significant cavitation, such as those from a high-velocity gunshot wound, may require more than three applicators to appropriately pack the wound. Do not attempt to remove dressing from wound. Sponges must be removed intraoperatively by surgeon with the capability and equipment for achieving proximal and distal vascular control. 
cover the wound with an occlusive or pressure dressing. If available, use an elastic bandage. If bleeding persists, apply manual pressure until bleeding is controlled. Remove the included casualty card from the outer pouch. Assess the patient for peripheral circulation and document presence of distal pulse on casualty card. Warning, vascular compression greater than four hours is not recommended due to concerns related to limb ischemia. After completion of treatment, remove the insert card from the outer package and fill it out completely. A line has been added above the notes depicting the amount of extat applicators used to treat the wound. Circle the appropriate number. Document clinical assessments, treatments rendered, and changes in the casualty status on the included casualty card. The casualty card also contains instructions for removing extat sponges from the wound. Forward this information with the casualty to the next level of care. In addition to directly communicating patient information to the next provider in the chain of care, attach the casualty card to the patient in a visible location. A safety pin and rubber band are included with the casualty card to facilitate attachment. Preferably, attach the casualty card near the wound. For example, using the safety pin, the card may be attached to the occlusive or pressure dressing used to cover the wound, or, if possible, to a nearby portion of clothing. If attachment near the wound is not possible, alternative locations may include the wrist, ankle, clothing of the upper lower torso, patient record holders on the litter, or hypothermia prevention kit. It is important that, regardless of the means utilized to attach the card, the information on the card reaches the surgeon with the patient. Extat Dressing Removal Procedure. Step one, survey the wound site and assess potential vascular bleeding sites and develop a plan to achieve surgical control of injured vessels. Step two, remove sponges from the wound site manually or with surgical forceps to the site of bleeding. Step three, thoroughly explore wound and remove all sponges. Step four, prior to wound closure, obtain plain x-ray, optimally in more than one projection. The presence of retained sponges may be easily missed on radiographic images. Thoroughly examine x-ray for radiopaque x pattern of sponges that may be inadvertently retained in the wound cavity. If sponges are identified via x-ray, Carefully re-examine wound cavity and remove sponges. Perform and review second x-ray to confirm complete sponge removal. Warning, relying on sponge count alone post-removal is not an accurate means of determining complete mini sponge removal from the wound. Careful surgical exploration of the wound site is required to ensure complete sponge removal from the wound. Confirmation of complete removal from the wound by x-ray is required to search for possible retained mini sponges. Review of x-rays to identify potential retained extant mini sponges should be performed by physicians trained to review surgical x-rays. While the mini sponges are designed with an x-pattern radiopaque marker, it may be confused with other radiopaque material in the wound, such as bone chips and wound clips. In vivo testing evaluated the safety and efficacy of the XDAT dressing, the test article, versus XDAT 30, the control article, in an extreme trauma model of junctional hemorrhage. The model implemented in the study was an application of the United States Army Institute of Surgical Research standardized model for uncontrolled hemorrhage consisting of a femoral artery vascular injury in swine. The difference between the dressings is that the XDAT test article contains mini sponge that are chitosan free while the XDAT30 predicate contains mini sponges that are coated with chitosan. 10 animals were treated with the XDAT test article and 10 animals were treated with the XDAT30 control article dressing. The femoral artery hemorrhage was created using a six millimeter vascular punch after isolating a portion of the femoral artery. The artery was allowed to freely bleed for 45 seconds and the test or control article was applied. The animal was followed and observed while anesthetized for six hours during which resuscitative fluids 
were administrated as needed to support blood pressure. No additional wound care was provided during the six-hour observation period. Following the six-hour observation period, the test or control article was removed from the wound site and the animal euthanized. There was one rebleeding event with the XDAT test article and two rebleeding events with the XDAT 30 control article defined as visible bloodshed from the wound site. Post treatment blood loss defined as amount of bloodshed from the wound cavity during the time period following the 45 second free bleed until study termination was 0.1 plus or minus 0.2 mils per kilogram in the XDAT test group and 1.0 plus or minus 3.0 mils per kilogram in the XDAT 30 test group. The final map was 66 plus or minus 4 millimeters of mercury in the XDAT test article group and 65 plus or minus 3 millimeters of mercury in the XDAT 30 control article group. All animals survived the entire six hour observation period Thus, survival was 100% in both the XDAT test article and XDAT 30 control article treatment groups. Histological evaluation of the wound sites treated with either XDAT dressing or the standard of care dressing in the swine femoral injury model observed at approximately six hours post-treatment showed no adverse effect of treatment and no qualitative or quantitative differences in tissue response or level of tissue necrosis between the test and control articles. 